You're on. Today is March 31st, 2007. My name is Dorsey Dujan, and I'll be interviewing with Bob Herzog on the camera. And we are at the home of Juliet Garcia, which is at 1401 North Occidental, Los Angeles. Juliet, give us your full name. Uh, my name is Juliet Garcia. And you are the daughter of? I am the daughter of Rose Garcia and Vince Soto. Um, Vince Soto lives in Indiana and grew up in Illinois and in Chicago. And he came here to study at UCLA and then that's where my mom was and that's where they met. And I was born at UCLA Medical Center. And then he moved back after they separated and um, He's got, um, he's married with, uh, and he has four other children. Tell us about living here in Los Angeles. You grew up in Silver Lake? Correct. Born and raised. Uh, I grew up in this house for the most part. Uh, there was just a short time in high school where we moved to Hollywood, but most of the years have been here and my adult years as well. Uh, it was a great neighborhood and still is. Uh, it was different, of course, growing up. You know, we could ride our bikes and play out on the street. We, they still can, but we have to be careful with the kids and watch them because there's a lot of traffic, people are shortcutting. People didn't shortcut through here before, but they do now. Um, we knew pretty much all the neighbors by name and visited on and off during the year. Uh, now we don't know everybody. Um, personally and we don't go to everybody's house but we do go to quite a few of the houses and my uncle lives up the street my uncle Mike and my cousin-in-law lives across the street Eldy <clears throat> Paula lives next door and her and my son are very close and we do things always together and um, the neighbors in front we all know them um, Michael next door he's uh, he's been a great neighbor and he's done a wonderful job with his house and Candy and Victor, which are next to Paula, they watched me grow up. I think they came into the neighborhood when I was maybe 10, so 30 plus years. <laughs> a lot of years. <laughs> Give us a little history of the house and how the house came about. Okay, My great-grandfather, Emilio Palacios, Reyes Palacios, came to this country uh, via a very long journey from um, Mexico City uh, where he was born and raised and he had an orchestra and a school uh, but he had to leave the country it was during the revolution and they went from he took his wife which was Julia my great-grandmother um, my grandmother Marie and Albertina and they went from Mexico City to Veracruz, from Veracruz they lived in Yucatan and from Yucatan they went to Cuba for two years with family there because my grand, great grandfather was uh, had Cuban family and they, they lived in Cuba for two years, uh, studied, he worked in the orchestra there uh, then they went to New Orleans um, in Arizona, he did um, he also uh, played at Carnegie Hall, and then he came to Los Angeles during the Depression, and he had gold coins, and during that time, of course, that was very big, and he was able to buy this property. It wasn't finished because the person who had started it couldn't complete it because of the Depression. So he had to complete it the best way he could, with as much as he could. Um, basically, it was this room that room, the kitchen and the bathroom, that was it. There was no other rooms. And what ended up happening is my, well, my great-grandfather um, continued the living room that way, and that was it. And um, they all lived in the house. My aunt got married, my aunt Albertina got married, and my great-grandfather built a house in the back so that they could live, but unfortunately, her husband took her to go live in Nicaragua which was a big, uh, just a big concern for the family and was a huge hardship. It was a lot of drama during that time for her to leave, and, but it was the way it was. 
and she basically lived there probably close to 10 years. Where was that again? Nicaragua. Nicaragua, okay. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, my, my grandmother lived here with um, my great-grandparents. Uh, went to school, studied, uh, was in the San Francisco Opera. She was a concert pianist. And then um, she met my grandfather through friends, um, Joe Vargas and Mary Vargas. Joe Vargas, uh, Mary Vargas was one of the San Gabriel, the original San Gabrielinos, and they had a, um, a walnut or a nut farm. It's, the buildings are still there. It was part of actually Whittier and Arrows, um, but part of the ranch house is still there off of Santa Anita. I think it's Santa, Santa Anita. And he, um, Joe Vargas eventually became mayor of South El Monte. They had a friend, Dan Garcia, and they introduced him to my grandmother and uh, the courtship started. And um, even though my grandmother did not want to get married because she was, it was just awful when her sister left, she didn't want that to happen. Um, my grandfather, of course, won her over and she did get married. She got married in, in that room, which is now Daniel's bedroom, but at the time it was the part of the living room. And the wedding from, the reception from what I understand went on for three days from what the previous neighbor, the original neighbor, <laughs> he said, oh yeah, this went on for three days. <laughs> there was music and musicians coming in and out and food. My grandfather was a chef, so of course it was nonstop food. And they couldn't take a honeymoon during that time. Um, he was working and as a chef, he just couldn't just take off. And he was, a, he had, and they went and lived in the back house and had my mom in the back house. And that's basically her first years. And then when my great-grandfather was killed up on Silver Lake Boulevard, crossing the street, coming home from um, uh, a show. Uh, then they moved in here and went to the back house because they needed to take care of my great-grandmother who was ill. She had a lot of illnesses uh, towards the end of her life. And that's when my grandfather started constructing. Uh, he constructed the back room, which was a sunroom at the time, and now it's now a bedroom. Then he constructed the bed, her, the master bedroom, uh, which is off what was originally the living room, which is now Daniel's room. And um, he enlarged the kitchen, uh, redid the bathroom, made the shop in the patio, because it was just a patio, uh, and constantly worked on the house. The house always needed something. Let's see, it continues to <laughs> need something. And so that's pretty much the history of the house and the neighborhood, I think. <laughs> when I wasn't, I may have missed it. When, what year did, was the construction on this house started? During the Depression. I, In the 30s sometime, uh, 1930s? Late 20s, probably, early 30s. I, I wouldn't take it too far into the 30s. Uh, I'm just okay. not sure the exact date. My mom has all that paperwork on the I thought from when I had seen that it was like around 1927. It could have been, I'm not really I sure. I think your mom sent me a letter with a picture of the house and the date, and I think it was in the late 20s. So. Yeah, I, I, yeah, yeah, it could be. Okay, we'll confirm all that later. Yeah, it's okay. That I don't have. <laughs> but I, I do know that um, this area here was originally a riverbed. Right, it was a riverbed, it was a cow pasture, the cows used to go up and down the hill up that one and up the other one and this was just it was a creek bed I think and that's why it's really difficult to the gardens here are really it's hard <laughs> the the dirt it's just really difficult to work with it's like concrete you went to school in Silver Lake? I went to school in Silver Lake um, I went to St. Francis for first and second grade then I went to Mitchell Trina until I was in sixth grade went back to St. Francis, then went to another school outside of the area, came back to St. Francis and graduated, and then um, went to Thomas Star King for a very brief moment, and then I went out of the area to finish my schooling. Can you tell us a little bit more about what growing up was like here and the various things that you did uh, that were in the area? 
And did you did you ever use public transportation? Um, all the kids would gather pretty much outside every day. Um, I had most of the sports equipment, so I was kind of in charge of of <laughs> any sports teams. <laughs> if they wanted to play sports, they'd come to me. <laughs> so we'd play football and baseball and basketball. There was a a kid behind us, a Stewart, he had a basketball hoop, so we'd all go over there. He was the only one that had that. I had one, but it wasn't it wasn't very good. Um, I grew up knowing everybody, and we'd all be uh, hanging out at each other's house. Uh, we'd ride our bikes um, all over the neighborhood. We could literally go from one end of uh, the street to the other through everyone's backyards, basically, and we did just hop over and that's just the way it was um let's see we used to go up into the hills and explore we used to go to the rec center silver lake rec center um hang out there do you ever remember a time when there weren't fences around the lake or have there always been fences around the lake I, as far as i remember they, i think there was always fences i don't i don't really remember um has the area changed much to you? Um, it has. It's gone through cycles. It's gone through good cycles, bad cycles, and back and back up to being good. There was a time during the 80s where it was really tough. Um, it had changed the area, and, and we actually got the Guardian Angels out here, and we, we patrolled with them, and we worked with Rampart Northeast very closely, and we continue to, not as close as we have at that time, because it was on a daily basis that way. Um, my mom and I used to go out and paint graffiti, and and they used to call paint it out graffiti? painting out paint out graffiti. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> paint out graffiti. You're the one. Yeah, <laughs> paint out the graffiti, and they used to call us the graffiti busters. Uh -uh. We'd go out at all times, days and nights, and whatever, to clean up the neighborhood. And um, we don't really do that much anymore because <laughs> we've got uh, other resources. Thank goodness. Um, but your your mom and Joe they are still at the um, like at, at the outpost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my my mom, my stepfather, man, the outpost for um, the well for the police department. And they may not be on committees as much, but I yeah. know your mom is very active yeah. and she's always <laughs> doing something. Yes, my mom <laughs> is pretty dedicated to. <laughs> Sorry, that's for you. <laughs> that's real. <laughs> My, um, my mom's pretty dedicated to getting petitions and seeing Garcetti uh, as much as possible and getting stuff done and handled and make sure things don't get done that we don't want done and, uh, you know, report graffiti, um, uh, anything else that's going on, to speak to the senior lead officers. Yeah, she's pretty on top of everything. Do you have your, um, your albums? handy that you could maybe just show us a few photographs mm, yeah you house. might want to turn out because i that I'm okay i'm to, going to turn the camera yeah. off and then we'll go to phase, phase two <laughs> okay we're starting over again uh, dorsey is still here behind me but since i'm holding the camera right now juliet is going to tell us about this portrait that's been behind her uh since we started the interview and this is this is my great-grandfather. He's the one that originally bought the property here on 1401 North Occidental. And his name was Emilio Reyes Palacios. And he had his own orchestra and school. And he was, um, he was able to master every single instrument and be able to teach it, which is quite something. And he had shows uh, in downtown LA at all the big you know, the big theaters down there, the California, the Million Dollar, all the big theaters. Those were his, his uh, stomping grounds and he knew, he knew all uh, the musicians in the city and, uh, and had a, a great life up until he was, uh, until he passed away. It, it, this isn't the, it was your grandfather who was in the pedestrian accident, right? No. No, it was your great-grandfather, this gentleman. Yeah, he uh, was uh, hit, it was a hit-and-run accident on Silver Lake Boulevard, crossing, crossing the boulevard right here, at Parkman. 
and uh, unfortunately never recovered, so. Okay, very good. Okay. <laughs> Kill my bus. No, no, you're not in the picture at all. I'm right on okay. the... That's my great-grandfather, um, Emilio Reyes Palacios, my grandmother, and I, that's not her sister. I don't know who that is. He must be a friend of theirs. Cousin, maybe? Uh, no, none of our family came here. I just... Who are these people? Um, my grandmother, my great-grandfather. Oh, I'm not sure. <laughs> I don't know okay, who that's that man right. is. I'm not sure. Okay. Uh, ah, my aunt Albertina, my grandfather, Oops. and my grandmother. Okay, I'm, I'm, I'm my great grandfather. The, starting with that one again. Okay. Okay. My aunt I'm Albertina. Okay. My great grandfather, and my grandmother. Who's the upside down lady? Uh, that's my grandmother. Your grandmother. Mm-hmm. Who's the, the bathing baby, beauty? My grandmother. Your grandmother. Yeah, yeah. she liked to take lots of pictures. It's a very... <laughs> Do you have the wedding pictures? Uh, it should be in here, I, I think. I'm not sure, I hope. Who's this? It... All my grandmother. All, All, my grandma. gra All okay. these are my grandmother. This is the house. This is the back of this house. I'm missing. Oh, here we go. Okay, these are... And this is the side of this house. Okay. Nice dress. Mm -hmm. This is... This is the alleyway. Facing this way. See how the house is... There was nothing up on the hills. This is all accidental. Oops. I'm off the page. This is one of the houses down the street. I don't know why they, they had a thing about taking pictures in front of houses. But it's good because it's a, it's a record of the neighborhood. Yeah. Is this? My grandmother. It's all my grandmother. All your grandmother, okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all about her. <laughs> all the different poses. Very glamorous. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. She lived a good Oops. long life. Mm -hmm. Was she 100? She was 101. Going on 102. That's amazing. That's all I part can of see they're all of this all of house, house. Mm -hmm. or on the street. That's her sister. Her sister was quite different. She's very humble and quiet and didn't take as many pictures. <laughs> okay. That's the backyard. That's a good sampling of that. No. You're on. Where do you shop now, Juliet? Um, we still shop in the neighborhood, pretty much. Uh, shop at Trader Joe's. Love the store. Hate the parking. <laughs> That's what my neighbor says. He's so funny. Um, Gelson's across the street. Um, Ralph's every once in a while, if not Bonds. But uh, those are pretty much it. Target and Eagle Rock. Unfortunately, I have to go out of the area for that. And we eat in the neighborhood, you know. Um, some of the little places. Uh, Tays, of course. I was trying to think of the real Silver Lake ones because oh, um, yeah. it's kind of border. Coffee shops are okay too. Yeah, the uh, one on the Hyperion, uh, the Rowena. Um, the coffee table. Uh, we go to Astros. We were just at Astros last Sunday. Love that coffee shop. <laughs> um, <laughs> I think, uh, the Cuban restaurant? Yeah. El, um, El Cochinito. Um, That's what I was going to ask. Where do you go for Mexican food? Comida Mexicana. Uh, around here, we don't really do much of that. You know, we pretty much make it. If not, we, we end up going out a little bit further. <laughs> the family celebrations yeah. are absolutely amazing. Yeah. The food is fantastic. Yeah, we, we do some pretty good parties here still. And everyone still gathers at this house because it's pretty much a neutral point for everybody and everyone feels comfortable, you know. And your son goes to school and My here. son goes to school here. He goes to St. Francis. How old is he? He's 10. He's in fourth grade. Yes. He, and um, he participates in a lot of the, the sports programs at the, at the Silver Lake Rec. He's going into baseball next. Has he grown? Yeah, <laughs> a little bit. 
Not not as much as he's actually in a size 12 now. <laughs> Okay, here we are, the exterior of 1401 North Occidental Boulevard. We've just been inside the house. We're going to take a look at the front. This house having been built originally in about 1927, we think. Uh, now we're going to walk in and take a little house tour. This is one of our Silver Lake street, uh, streets. It has a lot of little cottages built in the 20s runs parallel to Silver Lake Boulevard to the east. I mean, we are east of Silver Lake Boulevard. And here we are at the front door. Welcome. There, there's the lady of the house. <laughs> Come on. There's Dorsey. And here we are in the living room. We've seen a little bit of this. We have wonderful family pictures here on top of this piano. This is definitely a musical family. And some of grandma, and I think that may be our hostess yes. up here. That's High school well, graduation well, picture yeah. probably. Yeah. Yeah. And other family members, this lady is your grandmother. Is that correct, Juliet? No, that's my mom. That's your mom? The one in the middle is my grandmother. Oh, that was your grandma. Okay, we have that. And then you were telling us about these gentlemen in this picture earlier. That's my grandfather, my Uncle Simon, my Uncle uh, Tom, my Uncle Fred. Uh, my Uncle Tom was in World War II. He was at one of the important battles and he was uh, injured and, and was returned to the United States. Uh, my Uncle uh, Tom, he was Naval Intelligence and lived China Lake, Alaska, and uh, he was a lifetime uh, Naval uh, officer. Um, ended up in San Diego for several years. Um, most of the, his work, unfortunately, we knew he did um, certain experiments with dolphins, and he did um, he did a lot of different things, but we were never allowed to know what he was doing. Cause Secret stuff. Yeah, <laughs> naval intelligence. <laughs> so. Who is this gentleman? Uh, those are my grandparents. It ah. uh, was one of their vacations uh, when my grandfather retired from being a chef. They went to Acapulco. Okay. Going to do a little pan here of the living room, dining room area. And uh, this room to our left is... Well, that's actually my David's son's room. My son's room. Um, this was the added on room. No, wait, no? this was added on, but it was actually part of the, it's the living room. And um, that's kind of what I'm, in, in my... Uh, in part of what I want to do uh, with remodeling the house, I want to make it the living room again. And this room, which is my bedroom, <laughs> the kitchen. So. Ah, it makes sense. Yeah, makes more sense. Okay. Much more sense. So. I'll just say, okay, the bathroom is. Through that door. Through that door. We're not going in there. Which will eventually be a hallway. And this is the kitchen, which will eventually be what? A bedroom and a bathroom. Bedroom and a bathroom. And this will be another bedroom. All the bedrooms will be in this side of the house. That makes sense. And the kitchen's been remodeled, obviously, since the house was constructed. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> we had a fire in here, um, and we were able to remodel. And then we're going through this room, which doesn't look That's, nearly as bad as... That was as a sunroom, and now it's a uh, back TV room, slash bedroom, slash uh, junk room, slash... <laughs> Not nearly as bad as you said it was. Office. I need someone to go open that door oh, for me. Careful with the wires. I'm washing everything today. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay, and this is now in the back. Dorsey, why don't you tell us about the, this little cottage you used to live in? Well, the cottage, as Julia had explained earlier, was built originally for family members to live there. But I had the good fortune of coming and when I first moved to Silver Lake, I lived in this cottage. It's a one-bedroom cottage with an absolutely gorgeous kitchen. We had a side yard and a backyard. And we, I was always able to enjoy the family celebrations here. Juliet loves to give parties. And I've had, had a wonderful time here. It was just absolutely a, a great opportunity for me to be living here with Juliet's family and watching her son Daniel grow up and 
her mom Rose was here all the time, and it, it's it's it just really gave me a, a a good footing in Silver Lake and gave me an opportunity to then go ahead and become you know part of um, the Arts and Culture Committee and the History Collective and to really learn more about Silver Lake and to fall in love with it and yes. I am very much in love with Silver When did Lake. you live here? I lived here, God, let's see, when was it? Well, you moved out a year ago, so, um, and you were here two years? Two, two or three, three years? Three. I thought it was three. Could have been three, I'm not Yeah, well. <laughs> <laughs> As time goes by. Yeah, totally. it does, it really goes by really fast. Around 2005 or so. Yeah, something My like son that. could probably tell you. Yes, Daniel could tell. Okay, he, so he you have. everything. You have a little patio back yes. here, too. It's kind of a mess right now. It's usually fixed up really nice. But we also had a big wind and storm the other day, and I haven't cleaned it since then. And it got, it got, it was, it's pretty bad back here right now. We had this major microburst. <laughs> and then we had a fire yesterday, which brought a whole uh, huge uh, dust cloud over Did you our, see that? the neighborhoods. I heard about it, but I yeah. didn't see it. Yeah, it was a, a, right over by where I work. Wildfire. In Universal. Yeah, off of Barham Boulevard. Yeah, it was huge, and all the dust clouds. So I was waiting until today to actually clean it, but I didn't get to. This is an addendum to the interview today with, with Juliet Garcia. Uh, the last shot, I believe, is uh, I showed you the exterior of the little house on at 1401 North Occidental Boulevard in Silver Lake. This is an original photo of the house uh, before it was added on to, and the approximate time that uh, the this picture was taken was in the late 1920s and I do believe that the lady standing out in front of the house is the great-grandmother who came to this country I'm not sure maybe from Mexico I mean, there was a little confusion there there's some Cubans in here too as I recall anyway it's all in the interview that precedes this photo but I did want to show you this because uh, this is Occidental Boulevard before it was developed and in the background uh, one street over is Silver Lake Boulevard and then you can see the construction beginning of the homes on the side of the hill above Silver Lake Boulevard to the west. It's certainly more complicated than that now. Nice photo.